Hello out there. This is Flash. Without Vinny today, again Vinny lists on In a Perfect World, coming to you from Denmark on the reallibertymedia.com. And my usual, hey Grimner, appreciate all the hard work you do at your computer to keep this stuff going. It's always a lot of fun, even when I don't like it. Later on I go, wow. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> and tonight we've got, uh, well, it's the middle of the night out there in Radio Land. By the time you get this, because Grimner does all that post production, puts it out there for people to find if they're looking for something different. And uh, on the bots and bodies, on the reallibertymedia.com chat, it's two in the morning on the East Coast right now, so it's kind of late night. But still logged on, but not necessarily active. Are Barman Beetle Grimnir, Moose Girl Brackets DC Anti Asmo Chalcedony, Graham Z I B Don C Java Doctor Two, J Dread Ponder Gander Miss Kate Rome's Vanna White Vinny Weather Dork, there's another bot, uh, Phantom Cyborg Noodle End Siv Me. For Rumpy, Gooberzilla, Gromit, Jays, Nines, Jays, Kiss, Prince, Pwn Sauce, Sock Puppet, and Smotaz. There's your uh, Chitter Chatter Entertainment lineup in the chat room of the Real Liberty Media right now for your laughs and such. And when I logged on this morning, a lot of the usual is uh, political stuff. Trump this Obama that the, the usual crap and it before Trump was ever the president he was a game show host and he was a front man for some bankers in New York City for a while you know he had quite a colorful past but not a lot of people seem familiar with his past well if they're for him well, they'll forgive his past. They don't even want to know what his past is. They just want him to move forward and, you know, forget the person he is to get you where you're going. So I, I opened up a few links over the time. And tonight on In a Perfect World, I am going to read some link to you folk. I even post uh, the first one here on the reallibertymedia.com chat. I really doubt anybody's going to open it up and pay any attention to it at this time of night. We're beyond opening links and reading that. This time we're usually drinking and getting ready to go to bed or asleep. Anyway, this little puppy is called... Uh, <laughs> uh, yes, Trump University was a massive scam. And it's uh, written by a fella, seems like a fella, Ian Tuttle. And this uh, sort of says politics and policy from the corner, uh, the National Review. So I haven't read the link. I am familiar with uh, the Trump University scandal. I read about that somewhere, but I'm not a university uh, activist, so I don't really care. But what I do care about is, you know, if you're going to be led somewhere by somebody that's claiming to be capable of doing something for you, well, wouldn't it make sense that the same person would show you how he did it? And the examples that uh, the Trump dynasty have are basically a, a list of failures and bailouts. So, I guess some people really, they seem to think that that's just the norm, the way things are supposed to be. And the story goes thusly. Many people believe that higher education is a de facto scam. Trump University, Donald Trump's real estate institution, was a du jour, or de jour one. I don't read foreign languages very well, as you guys probably know by now. First thing first. 
Trump University was never a university. When the school was established in 2005, uh, the New York State Education Department warned that it was in violation of state law for operating without a New York State ED license. Uh, New York State Education Problem. Trump ignored the warnings. The institution is now called <clears throat> Trump Entrepreneur Initiative. Q lawsuits. So, hmm. you know, then it's all that legal shit. You know, it doesn't have to be moral or ethical or acceptable, but as long as it's within the you know the guidelines of how these bigger things, these entities, can destroy you personally, you know, in a courtroom, <laughs> based on some language that nobody can really figure out what they're talking about but uh you know here we go anyway back to this epic tale about trump university and all the wonderful things that he accomplished using it trump university is currently the defendant in three lawsuits two class action lawsuits filed in california and one filed in New York by then Attorney General Eric Snyderman. Ooh, the Jews are speaking up. Who told CNN's New Day in 2013, we started looking at Trump University and discovered that it was a classic bait-and-switch scheme. It was a scam, starting with the fact that it was not a university. Trump used students say the same. In his affidavit, Richard Hewson reported that he and his wife concluded that we had paid over $20,000 for nothing based on our belief in Donald Trump and the promises made at the organization's free seminar <laughs> and three-day workshop. <laughs> but the whole thing was a scam. In fact, $20,000 is only a mid-range loss. The lead plaintiff in one of the California suits, yoga instructor Tarla Makaeff, interesting, M-A-K-A-E-F-F, -F, says she was scammed out of $60,000 over the course of her time in Trump. How could that have happened? The New York suit offers a suggestion. The free seminars were the first step in a bait and switch to induce prospective students to enroll in increasingly expensive seminars starting with the three-day $1,495 seminar. And ultimately, one of the well, it says one of respondents advanced seminars such as the Gold Elite Program, costing $35,000. At the free 90-minute introductory seminars to which Trump University advertisements and solicitations invited prospective students, Trump University instructors engaged in a methodical, systematic series of misrepresentations designed to convince students to sign up for the Trump University three-day seminar at a cost of $1,495. Hmm. The Atlantic, which got hold of a 41-page private and confidential playbook from Trump U, has attested to the same. The playbook says almost nothing about the guest speaker presentations. The ostensible reason why people showed up in this, to the seminar in the first place. Instead, the playbook focuses on the seminar's real purpose. To browbeat attendees into purchasing expensive Trump University course packages. To do that, instructors 
touted Trump's own promises. The students would be mentored by hand-picked real estate experts who would use Trump's own real estate strategies. Here's Trump making the pitch himself, and he's got the link in the in the link to video, <laughs> so you can see just how how this whole thing is actually done. <laughs> anyway, back to the story. In fact, Sherry isn't alone. No student ever met the Donald, despite hints from Trump University instructors that Trump was going to be in town often drops by or might show up. He never did. As Matt Labashin recounted in the Weekly Standard, at one seminar, attendees were told they'd get to have their picture taken with Trump. Instead, they ended up getting snapped with his cardboard cutout. Bob Above had such an opportunity and uh, <laughs> it's pictures in the link about this. There could be many more ads to come. The New York lawsuit alone represents some 5,000 victims. 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 What? Bunch of pussies. That's just, see, that's just good salesmanship on Donald's behalf. Because, hey, it's not the seller's fault that you're a dumbass and you believe shit without having any proof that it's there that's uh you know it's an old standby let the buyer beware okay <laughs> i just had to stop because of this fight and reset my pipe but uh hmm. five thousand victims bunch of babies spend your money and you don't get what you want then you're a victim no you should just research shit before you freaking invest in it and then make a sound judgment based on knowledge. Don't run off your ego and your emotions. That's how you get in trouble. That's how you end up getting married. It's your ego and your emotions. So maybe I should <laughs> rethink this. <laughs> I'm just kidding, honey. Anyway, meanwhile, Trump, who maintains that Trump University was a terrific school that did a fantastic job, has tried to bully his opponents out of the suit. Lawyers for Tarla Makeoff have requested a protective order from the court to protect her from further retaliation. According to court documents, Trump has threatened to sue Makeoff personally, as well as her attorneys. He's already brought a $100 million dollar counterclaim against the New York Attorney General's office. But it's not working. Trump himself will have to take the witness stand in San Diego federal court sometime during the election season. And because of the life, the timeline of the cases, a President Trump would be embroiled in these lawsuits long after November. Meanwhile, if there is any doubt that Trump U is designed to be a scam, the Atlanta puts that to rest with a few other choice tidbits from that private and confidential playbook used by Trump presenters. Well, it's not as juicy as I expected it to be. Gosh, you guys. <clears throat> ah, there's very little left to be even read about this. Kind of a disaster link. Didn't say much, just that... <clears throat> <laughs> Trump's being accused of lying and stealing. Yet, isn't he sitting in the most powerful seat of business on the entire planet right now? You know, the president? Maybe not. Maybe. Just maybe that the truth behind all this president shit is there is a Federal Reserve Bank that makes the fucking financial decisions at that level of government and then the press just dazzles us with these different departments and names of so-and-so and this that and the other and this law and that law and the other shit and you never really understand what's going on from the beginning but hey man it, who wants to admit they don't understand what the fuck these people are talking about and none of it makes any sense oh what else they got going they got the, uh, the gun grab coming 
they going to come and they're going to take your guns. And the, the more I, I see of these uh, mass shootings, isn't it strange to anybody at all, beside me, that they are always uh, unarmed crowds. Nobody in those crowds ever has a weapon to fight back with. Nothing. Zero. They run away. Wait a minute. In a country with, you know, carry, conceal and carry permits and everybody's got a gun and all this crap we read and read and read and read and read. But yet, whenever there's gunfire, what happens? Nothing. You just read about a bunch of statistics on a screen based on somebody's wanting to grab some guns. And as they showed you at the Boston Marathon, if the state wants your guns, when they come to get them, you'll open the fucking door, you'll let them in, and they'll take whatever they like. And nobody will resist. Because it's overwhelming. How could you resist the military presence at your freaking front door of your home where you live? When you're raised to your whole life to think, no, they'll never do that to us. And then they do. Nobody does anything. They just talk a big game. Ah, fight to the bitter end. They're not taking my guns. Uh, well, Waco, they said the same thing there. Ruby Ridge. There's a few uh, examples that made the headlines to, you know, just keep the population terrified of the FBI. And uh, there's a lot of things that happened that weren't as popular where the, the state sent the the cops in to kill and took out entire city blocks doing it. Uh, fuck whoever was there was just a victim. You know, if you weren't on their side, you should have got out when you had a chance, and they just destroy whatever they see. So, and here we are. And uh, I'm doing a special um, Donald Trump podcast today about all the good work that the POTUS does on his own behalf. So, as a representative of we the people, I assume that the people that support this guy believe that what he is accused of doing is okay. Because, well, you know, it's one thing to accuse a guy of doing something, but mm, some of this stuff is kind of obvious. You don't need to wait for a court judge to sit at his fucking bench and decide some things are kind of obvious but we the people <laughs> we got we got opinions about every fucking thing and we know so much shit so now let's go on to uh, another epic Donald Trump story and this one is entitled <laughs> why Donald Trump's companies went bankrupt uh, this is out of thought Co. Dot something. I don't see a name who wrote it though. I'm looking. Tom Merce, M U R S E. And he writes, he starts out with hmm, Donald Trump has portrayed himself as a successful businessman who has amassed a net worth of as much as $10 billion. But he has also led some of his companies into bankruptcy. Maneuvers, he says, were designed to restructure their massive debt. Use of federal law to protect his interests. Critics have cited the Trump corporate bankruptcies are examples of his reckless and his recklessness and inability to manage. But the real estate developer, casino operator, and former reality TV star says his use of federal law to protect his interests illustrates his sharp business acumen. I have used the laws of this country just like the greatest people that you read about every day in business have used the laws of this country. The chapter laws to do a great job for my company, my employees, myself, and my family, Trump said in August 2015. Yeah, my, 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 my. Sounds like a real leader to me, baby. 
me telling you. <laughs> I And I don't care who's in power, by the way, folks. It doesn't matter. Trump, Hillary, you, me, I would... I'd sell out to the fucking highest bidder in a heartbeat and kiss all of you goodbye. Make me the president and see how much you like it. But that's not what we get. We get these lying fucking thieves that get in there and promise you the freaking moon and could give two shits about you. And that and that shit I just read kind of shows you that. <laughs> anyway. Six. <clears throat> Corporate bankruptcies. Trump has filed Chapter 11. Bankruptcy for his companies six times. Three of the casino bankruptcies came during the recession of the early 1990s and the Gulf War, both of which contributed to hard times in Atlantic City, New Jersey's gambling facilities. He also entered a Manhattan hotel and two casino holding companies into bankruptcy. Chapter 11 bankruptcy allows companies to restructure or wipe away much of their debt to other companies, creditors, and shareholders while remaining in business, but under the supervision of a bankruptcy court. Chapter 11 is often called reorganization because it allows the business to emerge from the process more efficient and on good terms with its creditors. <laughs> this is priceless stuff. I, I hope Grimm enjoys this, uh, all this knowledge I, I'm spewing out about the president's bankruptcies. I mean, just the word. It, it's an abusive uh, uh, word. You know, nobody likes to that hear that word especially when it's connected to them but it's a good way to dump your debt and screw other people uh one let's see personal versus corporate bankruptcy <laughs> straw man versus straw man one point of clarification trump has never filed personal bankruptcy only corporate bankruptcy related to his casinos in atlantic city I have never gone bankrupt, Trump has said. Here is a look at the six Trump corporate bankruptcies. The details are a matter of public record and have been widely published by the news media and even discussed by the president himself. <laughs> Goes to 1991, <laughs> and they itemized each one. This is going to be fun. Okay, I'm going to continue with this story. Oh, my goodness. I have no idea when it, I just like the headlines. So you guys are in, in for the surprise that I'm in for. Okay. <laughs> and it starts out with uh, 1991 Trump Taj Mahal. Uh, Trump opened the 1.2 billion Taj Mahal Casino Resort in Atlantic City in April 1990. One year later, in the summer of 1991, it sought Chapter 11 Bankruptcy Protection because it was unable to generate enough gambling revenue to cover the massive costs of building the facility, particularly amid a recession. Trump was forced to relinquish half of his ownership in the, co in the casino and sell off his yacht and his airline. The bondholders were awarded lower interest payments. Trump's Taj Mahal was described as the eighth wonder of the world and the largest casino in the world. The casino covered 4.2 million square feet on 17 acres of land. Its operations were said to have cannibalized the revenue of Trump's Plaza and Castle Casinos. Your wish is our command. Our wish is that your experience here be filled with magic and enchantment. The resort staff promised at the time, no, that's how they wrote that, more than 60,000 people a day visited the Taj Mahal in its opening days. The Taj Mahal emerged from bankruptcy within weeks of its filing, but was later closed. Wow, number two. Well, this guy's, see, I can... 
I'm starting to feel very uh, comfortable now with Trump. He's such a success. You know, because he built the biggest damn thing ever built in the world and shit. But uh, succeeding at it, wait a minute, you don't have to be a success. You just got to put it there. So, you know, I guess maybe that just changes the outlook of uh, what <laughs> what ownership truly is. Because I know a lot of people, they're very convinced about this. Oh, uh, now I got my cat and my dog bouncing around. Uh, they're convinced about this ownership stuff. Eh, you can't help it. I mean, they, there's plenty of it going around. Oh, no, no, no. Hey, wait, 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 Doc. No, the, my cat's playing with my mic cord. <laughs> I was like in a merry moment. <laughs> Cirque went to the city to go play a grown-up for the day today. So I've got the house to myself with the animals. And they're animals. They like my attention. So they they know if I'm doing something, if they interrupt that something I'm doing, I'll pay attention to them. And usually it's pleasant attention because I don't mind my cat interrupting me. But I'm doing radio. <laughs> so like Mary, yeah, come on. Don't, don't do it when I'm live, you maniac. But, of course, I'm reading this Trump crap. So, hmm. The show might not really be all that great. I'm going to do a short I do a short hour show this week, but here we go. Trump 1992 Trump Castle Hotel and Casino. The Castle Hotel and Casino entered bankruptcy in March 1992 and had the most difficulty of Trump's Atlantic City properties in covering its operational costs. The Trump organization relinquished half of its holdings in the castle to the bondholders. Trump opened the castle in 1985. The casino remains uh, in operation under new ownership and a new name, the Golden Nugget. <laughs> wow. I didn't see. I'm not familiar with these details to where uh, the cat's fucking around here, where I've got him committed to memory. But what I do know of this just makes reading it uh, gives it just that much more of a foundation to to not believe every freaking thing that you hear one way or the other you know do a little checking and behind everybody there's a there's always a when you have somebody in the, this level of public eye there's always going to be crap somebody's going to either make it up or it's going to be true how do you know if you weren't there or you're not involved, say all we have is this, whatever we, uh, news outlets and whatnot, they're not very dependable. And then now we've got the internet, which kind of makes the playing field a little better. I mean, at least we can open up different answers to the same question. But then you're stuck deciding, hey... Which which side of this thing do I want to trust? <laughs> and I'm amused because behind everything, all the players are all corrupt. At some point in their life, at some point in their game, uh, their office, whatever they do, something will always come forward from the past and point at them and make them look a certain way to a certain kind of voter. <laughs> and I just look at them all the same. I don't. I can't really say I, did, I would recognize the difference between Hillary and Trump, Republican and Democrat. It's the same shit to me. It's just a matter of uh, one side wants to control you uh, physically, the Democrats, and the other side wants to control you financially, and that's the Republicans. So you can't win. You either give up your, you know, your brain or your body, one or the other. You you can't, can't keep anything and be part of a collective. You got to give something up, I think. So, eh, I don't run around joining the collectives. And I might stand out a little bit because of it, but uh, there's no there's no strife, you know. Um, I don't argue with people in, in public situations the biggest thing that goes on is somebody that knows me from the neighborhood I live in or from 
some transaction might say, hey, when I'm sitting out on the street, and you got got people, passers-by that never saw me before, so they don't even know who I am, but they know the other guy. <laughs> it's that kind of town. So, hmm. Um, comfort. I think I'm bringing this up because of the chat on the uh, RLM to this <laughs> when I came on. It was a little heated. We get debatical. We like to be smart and no shit on the reallibertymedia.com chat. And everybody's got their own personal freaking opinion. Their own personal way of looking at it. And uh, when we're typing and then it gets personal, you start putting bad names and bad words and all that kind of crap. Um, because, um, hmm, hold on. You know, based on the idea that we can't get along about these ideas. And, and to, my, to me, all this Trump and government and Denmark and immigration and status, it's all a bunch of commerce, money. Just stay out of it. And if you get out of it, stay out of it. It's not that hard to do. But uh, other people seem to want to escape what I think is perfect. Society, if you know how a society works, then you know how to survive the society that you're in. <laughs> it's not hard to do. People are really nice to you when you're nice to them. And sometimes things go sour and partnerships uh, break up. But it doesn't have to be a personal thing. Just make it about the stuff and walk away from the stuff. The stuff ain't going to go anywhere. You'll never see a couch chasing you down the street to get you to come home. Or a table or a computer. All that stuff is stuff. Now, what's interesting though is people say the damnedest shit to each other in, in anger. And I've been doing it my whole fucking life. Get me angry about something. And the next thing you know, I'm I'm angry and my comments are negative negative. Well, there you go. But what, you know, what is it about life that takes us there in the first place? And how do you control it? Maybe you don't want even to control it. I, I would like to uh, have that kind of mental control someday, maybe. Not yet. I still enjoy uh, being spontaneous and going with my mood. Wherever my mood goes, I'll go with it. I don't, I don't take my mood and control the mood. The surroundings I'm in control the mood. Like the dog and the cat were roughhousing a little bit ago, making a lot of noise. So I closed the door and let them do what they do. And now Hannah's sitting out here next to me again, quietly and you know, calm and everything. But life, you know, life is meant to be lived, not not typed about or bragged about or it's just something personal about this stuff that Telling other people where you've been and what you did and all that's fun and wonderful. But the doing it, it's not in the repeating the story about where I went or how I got there that was fun. It was the actual doing the thing that was the fun part. And uh, now I found uh, a quite comfortable uh, existence in, in a boiling pot world where everybody's going slowly going insane. And uh, if you're not drinking or smoking your way through this shit and got no way to be uh, protected, I suppose, because uh, emotionally this must be shit, you know, to somebody that's always raw to every freaking word that comes their way. They got no defense. They take it serious and it matters. <laughs> I do it all the time, but I don't, I don't carry it. That's the thing I was trying to explain to my little wife. You know, all this shit's just a matter of how willing are you to carry what at what particular time of day. If that makes any sense, I, I think it makes plenty of sense. Uh, it goes to the Trump thing. 
Trump is the flavor of the day. It doesn't matter who they put out there. You're going to accept who they put out there. You don't have a choice. You can't say Trump's not my president. Well, but he, he may not be your president. He may not be who you chose. Well, then how could he possibly be your president if you don't want the guy to be your president? So you're, you're just being uh, verbally attacked, basically. Because you hold a different opinion than somebody else. And then the outcome, the, the who's in the seat, doesn't mean anything. It seems to. I guess depending on your uh, you know, your, your participation in the game. <laughs> How willing am I you know, to pretend that this political shit makes any fucking difference outside of in acts of commerce? It doesn't involve you any other time. And acts of commerce would be paying your uh, necessary bills for survival. You know, your property bills and your eating bills and your you your uh, energy bills. The things that we need to survive. <laughs> we can't survive without them. Well, they, the society that we live in put price on all these things. And... Uh, made slaves out of us because what should be there for everybody at, to grow or, or harvest however they like is ruled and regulated <laughs> by state you know and trump the same uh, the same laws that apply to me and you this guy has millions and billions and of dollars to argue about it in court so it makes the difference the illusion of finance is so real that we've taken it to this level <laughs> is a worldwide strike would be so easy to do and it would wouldn't take long to bring two three days and the wealthy would have to wipe their own ass and make their own food are you insane I mean think about it. people that have been pampered their whole life don't even know how to do anything nobody punishes them they punish the poor people that don't have any intelligence and it's a cycle and it's done on purpose I mean look at this the shit they call education <laughs> and and they're uh, they're teaching five-year-olds you know what what a dick is okay well that's very wonderful to some people but I think no I've got my own ideas and I come from a different time so all these new people that came along their thinking process you know through the through the excuse or I guess the guise of freedom of choice was really molded real really molded I mean to uh, to look at something with an open mind you you have to be able to. It's not. Hmm, it's not a choice you make. Oh, I'm going to look at this and just balance it out and see the truth. No, that's not how we do it. I don't think so. I think the way we do it is things are molded and and presented to us in certain fashion so that you'll follow that. Ooh, I like that. Oh, I don't like that. There you go. There's your real freedom of choice. Is you like something or you don't. And now you've got the governments in the world, wherever they at, that is, instructing the citizenry of you know these governments and of telling them how to behave, how to talk, and what what to call each other, <laughs> this word and that word and. Taking shit to levels of detail that should never have even been bothered. They should have left that shit alone. But uh, we've been conditioned the Fed trumps the state. So the state is the second banana to the Fed. <laughs> no, that's not the way it works. That's the way they've created it to appear. But no, the Fed is a... Hmm, it's just another illusion, just like the state. It's a matter of if you're going to get into the admiralty court and play. <laughs> Do you have that kind of fucking money? I don't. So, if I'm not even willing to uh, 
go out and chase the funds necessary to play the game, then it's kind of obvious that those playing would not be interested in me unless I took part in their game somehow. So there you go. Uh, hmm. Partnerships, this is what Trump does. So I guess what I'm saying is uh, I'm not considered to be a good American because I don't live in good America no more. Of course, living in good America was just a product of me being where I was. And just like when I was in Scotland. I didn't decide, oh, I'm going to go do this and become a Scot and all this kind of shit. I went to go see my mom. <laughs> and then my, my dad decided to, to croak before I got there, so I decided to take care of my wheelchair-bound mom. <laughs> and I lasted two and a half years. I think I did a, an excellent job <laughs> of taking care of my mom after losing her husband. But I didn't talk about that. I still don't, too very often but uh, these are just things that were in front of me to be done and I did them uh, choice wow I don't even know what the hell that really means I don't, if your body is in Scotland and you have to get up and go back to North Carolina to do something well it's not as easily done as it sounds with a uh, all that responsibility <laughs> slapping you in your face. You know, you got the woman that brought you in a world. <laughs> so you got to deal with, with life. And there you go. But um, I don't think responsibility is something that you should be forced into. I think if you don't want to do something, it's not a responsibility anymore. That Then it's, then it's a, a, like a job. Maybe not even a job, because I, I enjoyed a lot of work I did for funds. And they called them jobs, but I had fun, so I was like, wow, I'm working today, <laughs> cool. And I could kind of dictate how much money I'd make by how hard I wanted to work. Because um, I had a captive audience out there, in a sense. People that needed what I had, and if I got them to, to try it you know, blindly at my expense, then I'd end up with a customer. So I did that. And I learned that, you know, these big uh, companies that are out there, they have things that people are forced to buy by law. <laughs> you have to have these things. If you get caught without these things, we will fine you more money than buying the things was ever going to cost you. So... They play these like on uh, boats. You have to have uh, rain gear, depending on how many bodies you have on your boat. You have to have enough rain gear to cover everybody. Because for some reason, they think if you drown in wearing rain gear, it's less painful than if you're not wearing rain gear. I, I don't know. You go out into you know water and shit happens. <laughs> it's, take your chances. I don't I don't know, but. There's laws behind every, you know, everything that's sold, <laughs> and now there's laws to make certain companies buy those things. And I had a knack for putting that together and figure out who needed to buy this certain product in what state <laughs> or what business. Or sometimes people would have experience and lead me to it, and I go, "Wow, that was easy." But I don't think I'm a Donald Trump. I'm not that uh, megalomaniac. I don't come from a huge, you know, uh, family like he does. And I, <laughs> I told you guys this the other day too on another show. But I was talking to a Dane, and the Dane says, "Oh, hey, did you know that President Trump's name is really Trump, and he's German? They were they were kicked out of Germany. His father, they they didn't like him in Germany, so they." got rid of them <laughs> and, and now and now their name is Trump <laughs> and I just didn't you know I played along like it was news but no I, I'd heard that many times on the many chat sites and you know link places that I use you know like <laughs> minds.com is probably it's easier for me because simple but uh, all that big stuff the Twitter and the, the Facebook I gave up on all that I tried the Facebook or 
yeah, I tried the Facebook, gave up a few years ago, and then I tried the Twitter, and uh, nah, it's just too big. It's, I I don't think so. I, at least if I'm gonna get insulted, I know Gooberzilla. I know Goob doesn't doesn't mean half of what he says in the damn first place. Just chitter chatter on the screen, and take it to heart or don't. It's somebody's opinion. Woo! Life changing shit here, people. We read it on the chat room screen. <laughs> The only thing I, I really feel bad about is that you don't you know enjoy this shit because man life is a freaking trip. I go out to uh, Freddy Town. Cirque's not, didn't work yesterday. She stayed home and worked. And while she's at home, I can leave her with the pooch and just go out have a find something she wants me to go look for in town and go have a couple beers and just sit and watch people just alive. Just living their life. And yesterday in particular, I noticed how many um, people are, are physically crippled. Leg injuries, and this injuries, and braces, and crippled permanently. But uh, And then I walk around like, uh, hmm. So anyway, the reason I know I brought that up, I ran into one of the people I, I'm familiar with. Not name-wise, but we know each other's face. And he was at the bus stop as I'm passing him on my walk home. And he made a comment about, well, you, you like to walk. And me, and he pats his leg, he says, I, I can't do that anymore like that because I have this. And I never noticed it. So, you know, just one more thing for me to be aware of is how fucking lucky I am to have two functioning legs that operate without trouble. At my age, and I'm 10 years older than some of these people, and I might look at because of the gray, but physically it doesn't show. So did they kind of what? I thought you're about my age. <laughs> hey, thanks, kiddo. <laughs> I appreciate that, because I'm getting to, you know gray beard. I got a big old gray beard now. So uh, you, when you see me, I would suppose I don't. I wouldn't. I don't look young. That would be the farthest thing. But uh, hmm. I don't regret or resent any of this. I think living is uh, it's entertainment. You know, you get to do all these things with physical and make stuff <laughs> oh, creative. I was way more creative physically before I met Cirque than I am now. I think I've just taken a break for a few years because, you know, I worked so hard to get where I am. Uh, that, you know, I want to catch up and take it easy and slow. So life gave me an opportunity. I met Cirque and we clicked together and here we are. So I've got this like a uh, bizarre life, living the uh, outlaw guy, you know, life. Don't speak the language and, you know, doesn't have a visible means of support <laughs> because I'm older. Why Why do I need to work? I mean, are you crazy? That was the whole point of the first 30 freaking years, was to learn what to do in the second 30 years. And then you put the two of those together, and coming up in September, I get to incorporate the first 30 and the second 30, and turn them into another 30. <laughs> and then I got that mad scientist wife with her concoctions to keep me alive and, and physically uh comfortable so I can move and do shit. Uh, wow, it's, I started out, I was having arthritis problems. <clears throat> so I'll, I'll use the show to pass on this little bit of knowledge one more fucking time. I'm sorry to those that have heard it a million times, but if you're new and you never heard this, I think it's important. I have arthritis. <clears throat> so what it does is it robs the, uh, the cartilage in your joints and it depletes and it doesn't get reproduced. So I found out that rosehip, it's American powder, that it it actually does what cartilage is, you know, does. It kind of takes its place and it helps to repair the damage done through arthritis. And I can open and both close, not open and both, excuse me. I can open and close both hands, left or right, 
and there's no physical pain. But <clears throat> in the past, when I started to notice the arthritis, and when you're uh, say you have a broken broken bone where it's been broken and healed, and it snaps when you close your fingers or something odd like that. And arthritis attacks stuff like that and makes it physically hurt. So Cirque says, here, take this stuff. Take it for a couple of weeks, and, and you'll feel a difference probably in about a month. And I did. I listened to her. I trust her. So, ah, okay, you tell me to do this. It's taking a powder and a glass of water. Not a problem. And I did. And uh, what the other part was happening is I was starting to get a pain in my hip at that period of time. So... I started with the rose hip, and in, in a couple of weeks, the uh, pain subsided. I haven't had it back since, and I walk every at least every other day. I don't do it daily, but I go out to uh, the main focus of town. It takes about ah, 22 minutes or something. It's like a mile, and I'm a, a slow walker, so I just meander and look at all the houses and shit like a 10-year-old daydream about crap and think about you know uh people that you know on the internet maybe you never know uh sometimes like uh, i took some video for uh mental he likes trains so when the train comes into town i took a picture of the two car train <laughs> that brings bodies in and out of the ready town you know metropolis and it, it's not um it's very modern and uh, up-to-date and all that shit, but there's just not an abundance. It's not so crowded. Everybody and, and his brother's on it. It's still, a lot of people like to still drive around here, so there's a lot of car traffic. Well, not even a lot, but there's, <laughs> like right now, there's nothing on the street. You can hear it on the radio. If I was quiet enough, uh, like when the bikes roll by, <laughs> you get a Harley down the street. But we don't have uh, much air traffic, so Hannah will go out there and bark at a passing plane or a helicopter. I don't know. Maybe she thinks they're, you know, gas-powered birds. <laughs> Got that crazy dog. Anyway, so <coughs> I'm going to do a short one one hour show today, and I guess the point I was just trying to make about Trump. It, it doesn't matter. Obama, Trump, Hillary, uh, they're all the same. So if your life revolves around this uh, political crap, well, it, there you go. To me, I, it's a source of amusement. You know, um, people are free to think and believe whatever they please, whatever makes them happy, and that you know, should be protected. Shouldn't tell people what they can or cannot believe. But I think to make a decision about what you believe, that you should have more uh, input than some people get. And I would assume that there's folks out there that would say that about me because I'm an you know anarchist. I don't believe in doing anybody any physical harm. I don't consider calling you an idiot doing you any physical harm. Because that's just my opinion based on my indoctrination and looking at you, whoever you may be. And, you know, that's, I don't know, a right or not. That's just a behavior. That's something that people do. We sit in judgment. And if we didn't sit in judgment, when we were walking across the street, it wouldn't matter if there was a car coming or not because you got no judgment. Who gives a fuck? No, we've got lots of judgment. And it, we're supposed to only use it in ways that government protects. If the government don't protect this particular behavior, well, do it at your own peril. <laughs> wow, there you go. So, I don't... I don't think that uh, most of us give a shit enough to be a problem in the first place. It takes a lot of energy and planning to be a thorn in the ass of society. And it's never going to end well for somebody because you, you're going out there with, you know, purposely to 
be a problem. Hmm. Well, I would hope that I don't do that. And if you do that, that think about what you're doing. Because it's a whole lot better to uh, go out into the public world and be nice and do nice things for folk than it's ever been to go out there and fuck them up. Because <laughs> whether they deserve it or not is a you know that's a personal outlook. I don't I don't see the I don't see the balance of right and wrong. You, somebody did you a wrong, they were taught to do that. That's what they learned. So I assume that the we hold the future in the way we learn <laughs> and everything that we learn is manipulated from the time we're little till the time we're dead. So <laughs> good luck. And coming up tomorrow, I don't know if Vinny's doing a ponder gander or not. Sometimes he does, sometimes he don't. And if he does, I think it's at one o'clock on the East Coast. And then Mary, Graham Z. She does the Rocket Chair podcast on Wednesday and Friday, seven o'clock. <laughs> and uh, just let's just say some shows she does are epic. Thanks a lot to Mary, especially me and Grim both got a giggle out of your Wednesday night show when you went historic and you unloaded both barrels on everybody about history. I I got a big kick out of that show. And then at 11 o'clock, you got Moose Girl and Grimner. They do the Freaker's Ball. And if uh, Moose ain't around, he's going to just do the Freaker's Ball. It's he, Grim said he's not changing. He's just going to do a, ah, one name in the story. Then uh, Saturday, I come back with a dork table. I know Vinny will show up. Vinny and me like to do a dork table. Maybe we'll get Miss Mary. We, we never know. And uh, Sunday... Catch Grim doing the blues, and then we'll play, play a little trivia. I played a little this week. Didn't do too bad. Didn't do too good, but mm, sometimes I'm just not a good typist. Uh, then we play that up until Hal Anthony comes out from behind a woodshed. That's 12 o'clock on the West Coast, uh, California, Oregon, Washington time. And then Monday night, you got Grimner. Well, that was Hal Anthony on the from behind a woodshed, and then on Monday you got Grimner does uh, Grim leftovers <laughs> from uh, the show, the stuff he didn't do on the previous show. He does it then, and then uh, oh wait a minute, I I got a Thursday, I got a Thursday night, uh, twenty percent off, two o'clock on the East Coast, and uh, then this one. <laughs> So we'll see what happens. I might I might give up. If Vinny doesn't come back, I might stop doing the Tuesday show. So thanks a lot for whoever caught the show live and whoever is catching the show after it comes out and all that good stuff. Uh, Roger Wilco. 